plaintiff, Paula Martin, says she was a crack addict for years, and it cost her her children and her home. Paula claims she has since turned her life around and has sobered up, and she's suing her daughter today for the balance due on a loan. Defendant Jacqueline Banks says as a result of her mom's drug addiction, she wasn't there for Jacqueline as a child. And when Jacqueline was 13, her mother stole her birthday money and spent it on drugs. Start with you. Well, first of all, Your Honor, I would like to say that you are an inspiration to myself and many of us back in Cleveland, Ohio. I've followed your story as far as your past, and I kind of sort of turned my life around. Um, I was part of the war on drugs in the 90s, and mm. obviously I didn't say no. I am in recovery. I haven't done drugs since 2009 when I was in active addiction on crack cocaine. I lost my home. I lost mm. my job mm. in the city of Cleveland. Most importantly, I lost my kids and kind of like my soul. How many my daughter, children? I have two children. Um, I think I hurt my daughter the most. Um, the most... Uh, tragic thing I think that happened for her was her 13th birthday. I kind of stole her birthday money. She didn't have a birthday party and mom was kind of gone all night. So since that time we've, or I've been trying to rebuild my relationship with her. Hasn't been going that well. She's very argumentative, very disrespectful. However, in 2009, I decided that drugs wasn't the path for me anymore. Um, I do have a college degree. Oh, really? I am a uh, going to uh, Columbus um, September the 1st to be a manager nail tech. I did complete okay. school. Yeah. I'm also the CEO and founder of the United States and International Speaking Out Stop the Violence group, yeah. where we've been going for like 10 months now. And the goal in that group is, I call them the nephew set. And what we're doing is trying to, you know, provide social and, and economic programs and resources for them so that they don't take the path like me and some other people took. And I'm just here today to let my daughter know that when you borrow something, you know, I do. I know we have a past. I may have hurt her, but I still want my money. I still have bills that I have mm -hmm. to pay. And like the repo man, if she didn't pay the repo man, that's they right. come You're take telling the If she back. borrow something, pay it back. Correct. And that's the right thing to do. Particularly because you used to stealing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you said, you know. <laughs> I don't steal I'm anymore. Just kidding, you? <laughs> I haven't stolen anything since 2000. Congratulations, that's what I'm going to congratulate you. Give me a hand. <laughs> for coming out. You give me some background on yourself, young lady, before we get to the loan that she's suing about. Okay, well, the incident when I was 13 years old. Um, yeah, she didn't do anything for me on my birthday. It took my money and everything. Um, How old are you now? 21. What are you doing with yourself? Um, I'm enrolled in Promise Academy, um, doing the gateway to college um, through Tri-C. What is Working. Promise Academy? What type Promise of... Promise Academy is a charter school. Um, you're basically doing your high school work mm -hmm. and your college work at the same time so you don't fall back. Good. Congratulations to you. We look forward to hearing about all your success in the future. Um, and you've overcome some obstacles. This is a tremendous obstacle to have your mom addicted to drugs uh, the majority of your formative years. Many, if not most, turn to a life of crime, a life of self-destruction, and don't recover. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm glad you were able to recover. So we're going to give you a hand. Mm -hmm. and, all right, so tell us about the loan you're suing for. What happened here? Well, um, I was going back to school to get a business degree so that I would be more successful as a manager in nail tech. And I did get student loan money and grant money, so I gave... Jacqueline, two thousand dollars to get her a car, so that she would be able to get around. When was this? This was around June of two thousand four, fourteen. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, fourteen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because she's working, trying to go to school, and sometimes people give up when it's too stressful. Or you got to wait right. on the bus too long, and I didn't want her to have that issue. Good. Well, Jacqueline paid me a hundred dollars each month for about seven. What was months. the agreement? Was the it a hundred a month? It was a hundred a month, and we mm -hmm. did sign a promissory note. Let's see. And I have receipts where she paid the $100 a month. She was doing really well. And then it got to her birthday. 
Now, mind you, on her birthday, I had been giving her a birthday present plus a little, here's the 13th birthday to try to get past that. However, she felt like... Hold this, on. Well, each year I had been trying to give her a little 13th birthday present uh -huh. along with her original birthday present uh -huh. just to try to break the ice. So you continue to redeem yourself or attempt to. Attempt uh, to. And uh, that's why I wanted to give you credit for that right. because that's the approach to recovery is one, you have to admit uh, oh, you're God. wrong and two, try to redeem yourself. Correct. And make I'm up for that wrong that you've done to people. So I applaud you because that's one of the things that most recovering drug addicts that come before me or that I know, period, whether they come before me or not, that's the one point they forget mm -hmm. is to try and repair the damage that they've done. Correct. In fact, they try and brush it off as if, uh, you know, that was when I was a drug addict. Why are you mentioning it now? Because <laughs> you done done damage to everybody you ever touched. <laughs> and these folks are still damaged. Right. And you're still walking around here with your chest. I'm clean now. I'm clean. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm not. I'm, I'm dirty with bills. <laughs> because you stole my car. Right. And I still have no transportation, but you're walking around here talking about I'm recovered and I got me a new car. Well, where's mine? <laughs> what you got? <laughs> so I'm glad you said that because you could be in you could be in here saying, well, Judge, for the last 10 years, I've been living it up. Every birthday, and she said, "No, but well, I still ain't got my 13th. <laughs> so you living it up? <laughs> I'm still waiting on my 13th. <laughs> so she's getting her 13th. Even if you are living it up, you're at least making up for that. Well, Good. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. I just gave her a bunch of clothes for my grandson Good. that's not here well, yet. You, my point is, you're adhering to the real process of recovery, right. and I applaud you because most folks, as the one they miss, is repairing, getting mama that TV she stole. Uh, you think mama's forgotten? No, mama ain't forgotten. <laughs> she see you bringing in all those televisions. Anyhow, um, so she was supposed to pay every well, month and she stopped when? On her birthday. Yeah, you did say that. And what month was that? That was December. All right. I think I hurt my daughter the most. Um, the most uh, tragic thing I think that happened for her was her 13th birthday. I kind of stole her birthday money. She didn't have a birthday party, and mom was kind of gone all night. Plaintiff Paula Martin is suing her daughter, who says when she was 13, Paula stole her birthday money and spent it on drugs. Ma'am, what do you say to this? Well, yes, I was paying on it. Um, haven't missed a payment, but then when my birthday came around, yeah, I stopped paying, because it was like, I feel like I wasn't using the car as much as I should have been. Um, the essence of what you're saying is you wanted to return it because you wasn't using it as much as you were paying for. Yeah, can I say something? Else? Yes, sir. Come on out. If she wants you to, you want him to speak? Yeah, Your witness? That's my daughter. Okay. Right, Do you want him to speak? Yes. He might say something wrong sometimes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> State your name. My name is Jerome Banks. What do you want to tell me today? Okay, she writes, Paula, she didn't turn her life around. She... Stop the violence, doing community and all that. You know, she's doing good. I'm, I'm kind of proud of her, you know. Good. But she got a long way to go, though. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Because she didn't hurt her a lot, scarred her a lot throughout mm -hmm. her life, you know what I'm saying? And she want her to just forgive her, but it takes time. You see what I'm saying? You just can't expect her to forgive oh, you after to you me. put her... She knows oh, that. After she oh. put her what she put her through. Mm -hmm. Many a night she came crying to me, mommy this, mommy that. Yeah. And I tried to explain to Paula, she don't need a friend, she need her mother right now, you know? You know, you suing her for a car and all that, she's praying, and this and that. I understand she signed a promissory note. I taught her to, if you agree to some, stick to your agreement, you know, and pay what you owe, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I look like, I feel like this, you know, why is you putting her through this? All know? right, thank you. I think you're making a valid point, and I think what you might suggest as part of that, um, Perhaps you have, but I'm certainly going to as counseling between the two of you to overcome that trauma that right. you all have gone through. And if you want us to help you arrange for that, we'll do that. But you make a valid point and, uh, that you just can't forget that it happened. Now right. we're talking emotionally. We know you're right. trying to get people their assets, material things, but you also have to say, 
If we're not getting along, daughter, and is any of this based on the anger that you still have for what yeah. you went through, for what I put you through, maybe we should go and talk to somebody about it and work it out. You willing to do that? Yes, I All am. right, good. So that's another can we're going to give. <laughs> but, you know, the other part of this is you can't leave her in debt. She might have a relapse. No, I'm just <laughs> That's the first thing cause a relapse. I'm broke. Where's the pipe? <laughs> just kidding. You've been clean enough not to worry about that. Tell me about paying her, though. The balance due. Who has the car? I have the car. When did you get it back? I took it back from her, like a repo man would. When? Um, it's been a few months now. All right, just and... Sold it to her for two thousand. She's paid you how much? Seven hundred. All right, and you have, I have the, the car. Where she, she did. So you can't have both the car and the money. Right. Well, the thing is, like all you're entitled to is what you've lost in the deal. Go right. ahead. Okay. Well, the car. She's gonna get the car because she got my grandbaby in her stomach. All That's right. You want the car? I do. Okay, so when you give it a car back, you get your money. How's that? That's All right, right. 1300 is your judgment. Thank you. Good luck to you. Oh, a hug. Can we hug? We got a hug. We got a hug. <laughs> I like your shirt. I like your it's shirt. like my dress. <laughs> I want to say I love you. I can't apologize enough. I don't know what else to do. If we got to go to counseling, I guess we just got to go to counseling because I want my grandson to grow up in a healthy, happy home and not with us arguing all the time. I can't take back what I did. I didn't even sign up for it. If I would have known it was going to do all that to me, I would have never touched it. I love you, Mom, always, even if I don't show it. I love you, even if you don't see it. It's just what I want you to do is understand me more because it's been times in my life that you just wasn't there, so you haven't watched me grow. And I'm 21 and not 13 anymore. 